Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. Today I'm just gonna take a quick minute to talk about a recent release from Enscape that I'm super excited about. Um, Enscape has released 3.0 a little while ago, but they also released 3.1 and 3.2, and each point release has had some really, really nice features. And so I wanted to take a minute to just talk about two of my favorite features that came out of this 3.2 launch. I'm super excited about them. Um, they make a huge difference in the workflow. And so I'm really excited to share them with you guys here on the channel. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Enscape, check out the links below to previous episodes of my live stream, as well as here on the on the blog um, or on the, on the YouTube channel, um, some different videos and tutorials that I've gone through. Basically, it's a real-time rendering engine. I'm gonna jump in and show you what it is, but I'm really excited to talk about the two features. And the features are uh, dynamic um, asset placement, which is, really powerful and I'll show you exactly why. And then Panorama Tours is one of my favorite ones. Um, when it comes to presenting your Revit models in a fully rendered scene and then being able to send and and share that with clients, it's, it's huge, it's a big difference. So first let's jump into the first one which is dynamic asset placement. So I'm gonna jump into my screen here and I'm gonna show you sort of uh, the old way of placing assets versus the new way of placing assets. So as you can see, all of these green things here, these are these are these are Enscape assets. And so the way you would do it normally and before 3.2 is you would open the asset library um, and you would say, I want to click this and I want to place it here. And this is a chair and you just kind of place it in, in space to where where you want the chair to go um, over over time. Um, they have made it a little better as far as um, placing it on surfaces or faces versus work planes. Um, so you can see you can click it here. Um, and really the only way to do it um, successfully in Revit is to do it like I'm doing here, which is creating some 3D views with section boxes or um, going to floor plan views, clicking it, going into another view and placing it. And it's, just, it, it's, it's, it's an arduous process to place all of these pieces, not to mention you have to keep Enscape open and look on, on the side and sort of get that that perspective, so to speak, from it. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to launch Enscape on one side. So here's this same scene. Here's the Enscape version of the scene. Um, you can see there I'm just sort of zooming around. It's this nice little healthcare scene that we've got going on. And um, what I'm going to do is show you what the dynamic asset placement does. Um, so instead of placing the objects in Revit, you can actually place the objects in Enscape. And um, it may not seem like a big deal, but it's actually a huge deal because not only do they do you place them in Enscape, but you actually can, you push the objects back to Revit. So it saves a location and saves them into your model. So the way you do it is in Enscape, in Enscape 3.2, uh, you click the asset library, uh, which is the keyboard shortcut L, anyone who's interested in keyboard shortcuts. Um, so you click the asset library, it pops it open, and now you can see I have the same library accessible here in Enscape that I normally would have in Revit only. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly place a person. So I'll place this lady and look at this. See, I can actually place her in my 3D space, click there. <clears throat> and now there she is there. And if I click apply changes on the bottom, you'll see what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna push the information to Revit. And so there we go. The information's pushed and there she is right there, which is pretty cool. So the other thing that's really neat about this is <clears throat> because I can place these objects within uh, Enscape, I can also modify them. So even objects that were placed originally, notice how I'm hovering over, I can select them. If I select her, if I click on it and I click the little M, the little move button here and I click on her, you'll see I actually have the ability to rotate and move her location. So I can hover over here. I will warn you guys right now, the the it's a little sensitive the way the touch works when you're moving, but you can see I can move her here. Or um, this was actually, so this plant was placed a long time ago using an older version of Enscape. I can actually take this and move it and I can even rotate it within my scene and then click apply changes and it'll push that back to Revit. So a completely dynamic workflow between the two, which is great. It, it makes for a much more flexible space. Um, a, an example um, that I like to use here is, you know, putting things like pens and papers and all kinds of stuff on this desk can be something that that can be a little bit painful when you're doing it in Revit. Uh, you have to have different views. You have to have all kinds of, um, you know, uh, 3D views and, and elevation set up because a lot of times it wouldn't place it wouldn't place on the desk. So if I go here, I can go to Office Accessories. And I can place a bunch of stuff on this woman's desk uh, and it makes it a lot easier to do. 
So I'm clicking here, I'm placing a little pen holder, place some scissors down here. Uh, maybe we'll do some markers right here. I don't know what else we can add to the desk, uh, a phone. She has a phone here. I can place them, then I can click it and I can rotate it if I use the move. Um, you have the ability to scale as well if you're interested in that. And like I said, this is a little sensitive. I'm still getting used to that whole move thing, but uh, you can see there. So now I quickly placed all these objects on the desk. I click apply changes and now all the objects are right there. And then in Revit, you could see they're actually on the desk right there. There you can see the objects on the desks right there. So pretty cool. Uh, the other thing that this opened the door to, which is pretty cool, is I'm just going to go outside. Even though this was an interior scene, I'm just going to go outside in Enscape. And I'm going to make Enscape large. <clears throat> what this also opened the door for, for users to do is you'll notice there's a single asset placement button on the left-hand side of the screen. And then there is a multi-asset placement. So by giving users the ability to place objects within Enscape, it actually can, can give us more features for placement that don't exist in Revit. One of them is a multi-asset multi placement. So what I can do here is I can go in, and if I back out of, back out of filters, I go to vegetation, and then I'll filter down to trees. So now I can place If I hit this little checkbox, I can check a few different trees. Probably should pick the same size, but that's okay. So you see I have four trees placed on the bottom here. So I check them off, they're placed on the bottom here. You could see there's a little object for the width of, of my drawing. There's the density within the space. I'm gonna do a density distribution. And now if I click from here to here, you'll see it, it actually starts multi-placing trees and you can see I could change the width of it. I could change the density. I could change the, the distribution of it if I would like. And then I can click apply changes once I'm done. Confirm placement, apply changes. And it's actually placing all of these trees in that space. And I'm, I'm using trees in this in this example, but um, you could think, you know, you could put people, whatever. But um, this is great because this is something you don't have the option to do in Revit. You don't have the option to manually or, or multi-scatter. You have to use some sort of an override. And there we have it. There's our trees that were placed using a multi-scatter feature. Pretty cool. So that's your dynamic asset placement. Pretty neat, right? I mean, it, it changes the entire game as far as the as far as the workflow is concerned with with within Revit. Uh, being able to 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 place these objects in here in Enscape and then modify them in Revit, vice versa. It just gives this this uh, unique ability that that was pretty painful on, <laughs> especially when it comes to like small accessories and filling in scenes um, within the Enscape view. So dynamic asset placement, awesome new feature uh, in three point two. The second feature, um, there are more than just these two features, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll list I'll list them down there. You can check out the Enscape website. Um, but these are my two favorite from this particular release. The second feature um, is the, the panorama tour. So first, let me just show you the process of it. Um, and then you can see why it's super valuable. And it's one of those things that I think should have should have always kind of been there when they when they allowed us to do online um, online panorama. So basically, if I go to my views tab here, um, if I create a couple views, so I'm going to walk through the process of, of how you would do this. So I'm going to go inside my space. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to create a view here. And I'm going to call this one tour one, and I'm going to say create. And then I'm going to go over here. And here, maybe I'll say tour to create and then I'm going to uh, going to go over here maybe I want to look down this hallway and I'll say tour three you get the idea so I'm just gonna make a bunch of little scenes here so tour three okay so I'm creating views in Enscape this is all happening in Enscape right now if you want you can push those views back to Revit if you want to if you want to keep track of them um, so I have three views set up here. And so another feature that I think was 3.2, it might've been 3.1, but um, you can actually batch render, batch render um, panoramics as, panoramas as well. So I can go in here and I can click these three 
and I can flip down here and say render mono panoramas. Okay, so so I already did that, but I'm just showing you that's what you would do. You'd render mono panoramas. And once you render the mono panoramas, what you wanna do is push them to the cloud. So if I click upload management, you're gonna see all your panoramas right here. And there's a little box that says upload to cloud. I've already uploaded these for the sake of time, but you would click here and say upload to cloud. And so once you upload, upload them to the cloud, they're shareable. And this was something that came in 3.0 or even 2.9, I don't remember. Um, the ability to share these panoramas on the cloud, which is phenomenal when it comes to working with clients. So for example, this, this panorama right here, I could send this link or produce a link or a QR code to a client and they could jump in and look at this. But the one thing they couldn't do was actually explore the space without using a different link. Okay, so so um, before you'd have to send multiple links and say, go here, go here, go here. So what you can do now is if you create a panorama, panorama gallery and you add your images to it, when you open that gallery, so all I did was add those images to a gallery. Once I open it, you'll see you have the ability to see all of your spaces here. Right, so if I uh, if I open this, here's my panoramic. So that was nice. You have the ability to click through each one, and this is kind of where it was before. So I can go to this one and look around. I can go to to the previous one and look around. So I can at least get through the spaces, which was nice. But there's still no relationship between between the objects, and and it's not necessarily uh, you know straightforward. If I click edit here, and there's this little new button. Hopefully you can see my mouse in the top left here. There's a new button here. If I click it. It says activate tour mode. So if I flip from a gallery to a tour and I say I want to see all waypoints and click confirm, you notice what happens is little dots come up and now it becomes more, more UI friendly. This is something that people are used to doing. They see a dot here, they click it. And guess what? They're going to jump to the other scene. They want to go back, they click the dot over here. They want to go check out what's over here, they'll click it. It'll jump into the hallway. They want to go over here, they'll click it and they'll zoom in here. So just like that, you can render out the panoramas, which actually render pretty quickly, upload them to the cloud, and then you can actually save and share this with clients, end users, you name it, um, you know, colleagues and so on and so forth. And they can explore your Enscape scene as a rendered panoramic, as a tour. Super cool, super powerful. I'm super excited about it. I actually already used it with a, a, a client uh, to, to share with them a, a master bedroom suite. Um, and, and, and how they can click around it. And it was an easy way to share instead of downloading the entire EXE and trying to explain that process, not to mention, um, the, the end user needing the powerful PC to do it. Um, you know, you can send them this link and pretty much open out any device, including iPads, iPhones, Androids, etc. So awesome new features, awesome release for a point to release 3.2. Um, you know, Enscape is known for releasing some major features within point releases, and this is one of them. So I'm super excited to share it with you. I was excited to make this video to share it with you guys. I've got some more um, real time rendering reviews and videos coming up. Anyone who hasn't really been paying attention, you should know that um, all of the real time rendering programs have been releasing some wild stuff uh, in the last month or two. So I'm excited to share with you. So stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. And, uh, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Also, if you're interested in saving 10% off of a subscription to Enscape, head on over to enscape.bimafterdark.com. So cheers, guys. You guys are amazing. And I'll talk to you soon.